My name is uh, Willem van Dalkberg, and I'm going to talk about pushing edX to be open. Um, for people who don't know me, um, my main job is being coordinator of the two Delta communication team. I'm responsible for our open coursework program uh, and our uh, NOOCs and a lot of other stuff around it. Uh, I'm also a board member of the Open Courseware Consortium, and I'm project leader of the Open Courseware in Europe. Uh, my presentation is already online on the slide share, and uh, I'll tweet a lot, as you may have seen. Them. So if you have any questions afterwards, you can ask them there. Um, Push it to be open, I have to include this slide. Uh, my slide for the CC license, and I try to have it correctly all the images. Um, so um, what I'm going to talk about is first, what is open? I think we've heard a lot about it today something about what we're doing in Delft and open, and uh, last about edX and open. Um, so what is open? Um, what we have seen, especially around the MOOCs, is that they are rather limited in their definition of open. Um, so it's open, but actually it is closed. Um, you know, we're here at open ed, and um, what we here we always have to, talking about is the, the 4R um, model of uh, David White. So it's about uh, free to use, to revise, remix, and redistribute. Most MOOCs stay with just free, to, free access. Um, as to Delft, we think that that's not enough. Um, so what we're doing in Delft with Open is, is more than that. Um, First of all, we made a portal about open.tudelf.no <coughs> that not only includes our education, but also our research initiatives and ICT departments. Um, so <coughs> we're doing open courseware, uh, DelftX, but we're also uh, focusing open journals, uh, a lot of stuff is uh, open access, and uh, we also have uh, people who are research about open data. Um, but also our ICT department uh, is a uh, research for developing open source software. Um, and uh, recently we added an open API so that students can make apps with the data of the university. Um, it's all focused on open. Um, if we look at education, uh, we have uh, an image like this. Um, most important part of our university is campus education. We have uh, around uh, 18,000 students uh, on campus, and um, that will be for a long time. It will be uh, on campus education will be the most important stuff. Um, we have open courseware program. It's just the course materials, the same materials that are used in our regular class uh, classrooms. Um, this year we started with the MOOCs, and they really we trained changed content for that, and uh, we're using that content also in our online distance education. So we started off with um, a couple of master programs, or courses of master programs, uh, to attract uh, students who can't make it to the campus. We look at the open courseware, we started with that in 2007, it was also the first year I came to the Open Ed Conference, and now we have more than 120 courses online, um, a lot of visitors from all over the world. And um, with OpenCourseWare, we're not doing that alone. Um, we're, we're part of the OpenCourseWare Consortium. And the OpenCourseWare Consortium now already has more than 30,000 uh, courses online. Uh, almost 300 universities or institutions are uh, publishing content there from all over the world in a lot of languages. Uh, so worldwide coverage there. Uh, I think much better than if you look at the MOOCs, uh, current MOOC platforms, they're still limited to the Western world, mostly. Um, if we look at our uh, MOOCs, um, yeah, we joined the edX uh, consortium. Um, the first two MOOCs started in September and are finishing this, uh, th this month. <coughs> so there are solar energy and introduction to water management. I left out the numbers because we don't talk about the numbers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the next two will start in the spring of this year about next generation infrastructures and introduction to aeronautical engineering. And the third one will also start in the spring and that's credit risk management. Uh, but I don't have it up yet. Um, 
And from the beginning, when we started with uh, with with a Delta X and with a ad, joining AdX, we said we want to put an open license on our MOOCs because that fits with our philosophy within our university. So we did. And um, so our courses are on the Creative Commons attributes and non-commercial share alike license. I know I rather could have had it only CC BY, so anyone can reuse it. Uh, but uh, this is what we came up with. This is also the same license we're using for our open Courseware program, so it was for us the easiest way to go. Um, so the course is openly licensed. Um, that's the, what, what it says. Um, what we did is with, with, with LX, the videos are on YouTube. And uh, in YouTube, you only have the, uh, two choices, or it is uh, restricted, or it is CC BY. And we had some discussion, but we decided to do it CC BY. Um, so we got further there. Um, but uh, because of a lot of limitations in using YouTube, we also offer all the videos in different uh, formats, so anyone can download it, uh, regardless of your connection. Um, when we started out, we only had the videos on YouTube and uh, a full HD quality. Uh, but if you don't have a fast connection, we can watch the video. So um, now we add all the videos in 360, 720, and 1080. Um, so we try to make it easy for people to reuse our videos. Um, we also um, provide our slides as PDF. Um, they're created in, in PowerPoint, but if I put them on, on in PowerPoint, it's a file of a couple hundred uh, megabytes. So that's too big for most people to handle. So for now, we've decided on PDF. We're still looking at how we can further improve that, that it makes it easier for people to reuse it. Um, uh, one of the things we're looking at is using uh, SlideShare and put it on <coughs> SlideShare uh, as, as one of the possibilities, but we haven't decided yet, so I'm open to suggestions here. Uh, in uh, one of the courses, we're also using a textbook, and unfortunately, that's still copyright protected. Um, we were, we had negotiated with the publisher, and uh, for the publisher uh, of that book, it was the first time he got the question that we wanted to use the, the book in, an, uh, in a MOOC, so already we had to convince him that he should do that, so we were allowed now to put the book online in, in, um, uh, in the, the uh, viewer uh, that, that people can't officially download uh, the, the book. Uh, within, uh, I think, a couple of hours, the first students came up, oh, here's the PDF of the, of the book, because uh, yeah, we have engineering students, so uh, they found out that uh, you get, could get around it. Uh, but we also made a deal with the, that uh, the, uh, the students could, could get a discount uh, for the book. Um, so they got a 30% discount if they want to get the e-book or a paper version of it. Um, the publisher is very happy with us because the sales increased uh, about five, was five times higher this year than last year. So he's happy uh, with us. Um, and then the last uh, part of the of the of the of a mode is, is the questions. Um, for now, they're not downloadable. Uh, the, it's a complete course, and you can copy paste it if you really want to. But we don't offer any facilities for that, and that's mainly because the platform doesn't offer that yet. Um, we're looking at it, and um, we are also one of the things I, I would like to do is that people can really download the complete course as one part. Um, and we're talking about that, but it's not there yet. I would like to have an, like a common cartridge uh, uh, file that you can download and just upload in your uh, regular uh, learning management system and, and use the course. But we're making steps here. Um, yeah, if you look at why we decided to add X, uh, you have a lot of, of course, the, uh, the, the general points. Uh, it's a consortium of top universities, a focus on improving campus education, it's not for profit and a focus on research. Uh, but for us, it was the focus on open that decided for us that why we have chosen for edX. Uh, we negotiated with Coursera and with edX, and that was for us the major point in, uh, in deciding for going for edX. Um, so edX 
next now is a consortium of 29 uh, universities. And um, so we are made it now, but we have, I think, a relatively global coverage. Uh, but what I like is that it, it's not, it's a small number of universities. So we are in contact with most of them, talking with them, and trying to improve uh, stuff. Um, if we look at uh, edX, um, I'm talking about three things. So it's open source, it's open content, open standards. I think those three things make up the open part, should make up the open part. Um, so um, the open source part is that in, I think, beginning of uh, June, um, edX announced that uh, they were putting uh, the, their platform open source. And it means that you have the learning management system, you got the studio, that's the course sponsoring tool, and you got the Xbox, it is a, it's kind of an API um, to create uh, special things. And they have the machine grading APIs and an analytics framework. And that's the part that's online, everyone can, can download it, can use it, and uh, um, play with it. They decided on an uh, AGPL license, I'm not uh, that familiar with that, but that's one of the, I think, the general licenses for open source software. And it uh, allows that um, you can make uh, modifications and derivative work uh, of, uh, of, the, of the content. Um, and the only limitation they made is that uh, if you want to contribute back to uh, the, uh, the open edX, uh, you have to sign an agreement. And more and more, uh, universities are and uh, participants are doing that. Um, so if you want to get involved, you can go to go codes.edx.org and there's a mailing list. And uh, one of the, I thought interesting thing was this, uh, one of the guys who started with looking at the code uh, thought that the documentation was not as good as it should be. This is always is with uh, open source software, I uh, would say. And he started the WordPress size with uh, documentation about how to implement it and use it. I think that's a really good <coughs> initiative. So who joined edX now with the development of, of the code? Um, the first one uh, I would like to mention is Google. Google had their own tool, open source tool, uh, Google uh, Course Builder, and Google decided um, we can better join uh, together and, and, and develop together. It's much more powerful. And, um, that's now the developers of uh, Google are also working on the X code. Um, another one is Stanford. Um, you've heard quite some Stanford here, but uh, Stanford had an, uh, uh, there are quite some spin offs from Stanford around MOOCs, but uh, they also had the platform Open Class. Um, and they decided that Open Class is now based on uh, edX, uh, Open edX, and they're also, their developers <coughs> are. Developing on the code, and of course, uh, the different universities are participating in uh, coding uh, for it. I've got here a couple of names that specifically added uh, code to it. Um, so that's one part. There are other developers helping edX developing the code. I think that's a good thing. But uh, we also see that people are starting to use the, uh, the, uh, the open source software. Um, so one of the things I like is the French University Numérique Fun. Uh, <laughs> it's a platform of more than 100 French universities. Uh, they recently announced it, and they will offer MOOCs and uh, open uh, and also just regular online courses with the platform and it's built on Open edX. Another one is MOOC.org, and that's an initiative of uh, edX and Google together. So Google said, um, we just not only want to develop the code, but we also want, uh, they say it's like a YouTube for, uh, for MOOCs. So anyone uh, can, can start a MOOC on that platform. Uh, it's not live yet, but uh, I don't know, uh, will it come live, but in a couple of months. Early 2014. Yeah, and that's what I want. So starting in 2014, um, anyone can start a MOOC uh, based on the edX, uh, open, open edX platform. Um, I think it's a really good initiative uh, and, and makes it for a lot of people really easy to start a MOOC. Um, uh, what I already told that Stanford is using uh, 
open class is based on uh, open edX. And uh, another interesting <coughs> one is the, the Xutang. Uh, it's a, a platform in China of different universities, and they also decided on using uh, uh, open edX as a platform. And uh, today there was an announcement that uh, the Queen Rania Foundation uh, is starting uh, an, uh, they call it Etrac, uh, a platform for Ar Arabic MOOCs. And they will do two things. One is that they uh, will translate uh, some of the MOOCs that are currently running on edX, um, which of course the universities have to agree with that. Um, but they also will develop uh, Arabic uh, MOOCs uh, for that. I think it's really, well, that, what you see here is that uh, we get a, a global coverage here uh, based on the open source platform, and I think that's really good. And um, I know there, uh, edX is talking with more um, organizations about this, but I can't say yes names because it's not official yet. Um, so um, I, I think this is a good development. Um, if we go to the open contents, um, I'm a little bit disappointed must say that we're the only ones to do that as a TU Delft. Um, so we have four courses now. Um, and uh, hopefully more universities will see that this is the way to go. Open is the way to go. And um, uh, they're going to do that. Uh, especially MIT, I would think, really should do something. They have a, a, a very rich history in this case. And um, don't get her started. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But uh, yeah, uh, as George Siemens also mentioned in his uh, presentation, uh, MIT, is, but also other universities, they have done a lot of open work. And, and why don't you put your courses open there? Hopefully, others will come. But we will keep doing it and pushing uh, everyone and asking, why don't you do that? Um, Eventually, it, it should become that open is the stand, is the default. That's where we should go. To. Um, then open standards. Um, yeah, of course, I've put in the problem with open standards is that there are so many of them, um, especially in education. I think we uh, are doing uh, facing a lot. Um, and um, edX is focused on it. Um, they haven't implemented it all yet. And one of the first things that are implemented now is an LTI uh, integration. And um, we are pushing them to put up, come up with a uh, common quartus uh, format. And um, that they are trying to do more in it. And especially with more developers uh, uh, developing on the code, uh, open standards, I think, are getting more and more important. Um, so that's about open standards. So what's next? Um, so the first is, yeah, that technically support the open content. Now, I just put in some HTML code that it is an open license, but it would be nice to have it um, in the platform that we could just say, this is the license on this, this content, on this course. It's not there yet, and we're talking about it. Uh, second is that we want other courses from other universities also to be open, and extending support for open standards is, is important. Um, and then, some URLs where you can find uh, information about my university, open.tudelf.nl. And if you want to look at the code, you have the code at edX.org. You got data at edX.org, it's a little data model about behind it. And engineering that edX and talks about all the updates that are coming out of the platform. Questions? Hi, uh, I'm from John University. Uh, we are also uh, uh, edX in some institution. And as a long time advocate uh, for open education and loving what you're doing, so I appreciate that. Uh, I have uh, kind of a uh, little advocate in this kind of question here. Uh, so let's say uh, if one of our faculty members you want to use you know, your course content, and let's say 50%, then uh, start our own MOOC in edX, would that be possible? Um. <coughs> I don't understand your question. Well, would you allow a uh, faculty member from another edX, uh, well, possibly not edX, um, in a university to use in the content yeah. to be called this open license yeah. uh, to start uh, another MOOC? Yeah, that's no problem, Russ. And uh, these laptops are okay with that? 
Yeah, uh, what uh, one of my professors uh, with, the, with the solar energy course said, um, we've, with this MOOC we've set like a standard course for, um, uh, for solar energy. Uh, and um, I really would like that everyone would use this because, um, first of all, um, we raise the level of, of, uh, of information about, uh, about solar energy, but also they will see TU Delft is setting the standard here, and so you should come to Delft to, to see uh, what's going on. And so uh, he's not afraid of it. Uh, he even sends out, uh, to anyone who wants it, he sends out his PowerPoint presentations. He says, everyone can use it, uh, it's no problem, as long as they mention my name. Can you talk about the if there's been any difference in your experience with third-party content in the MOOC versus the OCW? Clearing third-party content? Is it the same um, experience? It's actually, uh, we've noticed it's, it's easier. Uh, because uh, um, people are much more aware of uh, what it is, and you get a much bigger audience. Mm -hmm. So uh, making the case for a publisher is, is mu much easier. Uh, I think uh, one of the first courses uh, Anand did uh, used the book of Elsevier. Within two weeks after the course started, the book was worldwide sold out. However, that was not openly licensed. It no. was already reserved and locked down. Yeah. But yeah. well, uh, I think, um, uh, although the, the content is available online mm -hmm. uh, there, still people want the book to mm -hmm. be, uh, the physical book. So uh, I think if you put it right, it's no problem there. So, Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, well. well, I just wanted to point out that, uh, as we all know, a lot of the MOOCs are not making it easy for the MOOCs to be openly licensed. Um, we're having those conversations with the MOOCs, but what it, what's really moving the MOOCs is exactly what TU Delft is doing. So TU Delft said to edX, hey, we can partner with a lot of different MOOCs. We'd like to partner with you, but we do open. And by open, we really mean open. We're going to openly license our course. And if you want our course, you're going to make that easy for us to do so. And uh, edX and Coursera and Udacity are now making it easy for universities as a default to openly license their courses when they chose to do so. But TU Delft, in my opinion, has really done the right thing. It's really leading here by telling the folks, look, this is not your decision whether or not our stuff is openly licensed. This is our decision. We built the content. We're the copyright holders. We, TU Delft, will decide how we license our content, thank you very much. And they just said, this is the way it's gonna be, and edX said, okay. And so if your universities, my ask of you is if you are partners with any of these MOOCs, uh, simply hold the line and tell them what you want, and or you will find somebody else. It's, it's actually that simple. Thank you. This is from me. I've, I've looked around with edX video, but from there don't, don't seem to be any licensing settings within the studio itself. Is that something maybe it might be useful to create yeah, that's what uh, one of the points is that we have to put that in the platform that it is really easy to set the standards. It's now just so insert somewhere HTML code and that's, that's it. Yeah. I don't know how we're doing on time. Okay. Last question. I, I'm curious um, why you didn't pick Canvas Network because you could have done your openly licensed content and with the entire infrastructure now saying all the standards because uh, we are getting much more exposure doing it on edX. Okay. And, uh, and for us, it was a strategic choice to, to join edX, uh, joining MIT, Harvard, Berkeley. That's for us the, the league we want to play in as a university. So uh, that's the difference. We also looked at the uh, like course sites, uh, was also one of the uh, uh, alternatives. But uh, yeah, we, we got our courses now. We started off with more than 50,000 students. Most campus courses and course size courses don't get that. Last question? No? I would like to thank you. I've got here a, a couple of folders about open education at TUDEL.